Welcome to our review on the reactivity of elements. So first thing we need to consider is what's actually happening when a metal reacts. So when metals actually react, they form positive ions. So they've got a positive charge. The more easily they form that ion, the more reactive the metal actually is, which is bits we've looked at when we've looked at group one. What we'll find is that a metal will actually react with water or acids if it's more reactive than hydrogen. Because remember, acids all contain hydrogen ions. So as long as the metal is more reactive than that hydrogen, it will react. If it's less reactive than hydrogen, no reaction. At the bottom there, I've just given you two of those general equations that we need to remember and be able to use. So metal plus water makes a metal hydroxide and hydrogen, like we saw with our group one alkali metals. And then a metal plus acid makes a salt and hydrogen. Make sure you do know those general equations and you can also write the names of salts when you're given the name of an acid and a metal. So if we wanted to actually work out the rate at which our reaction was occurring, if in the chemical reaction we're producing a gas, then the volume of the gas we make in a given time can be used to actually work out the rate of that reaction. Because all you do is the volume of the gas divided by the time, and that gives you the rate. Remember, the faster the rate, the more gas we're making in that same time frame. And one of the best ways and the most accurate ways to collect gas made in a reaction is using a gas syringe. So if ever they ask you to suggest an improvement to any chemical reaction that produces a gas, then we will use a gas syringe to collect it. Just as we saw when we looked at the halogens and their displacement reactions, we also have a displacement reaction that occurs with metals. So in our displacement reaction with metals, a more reactive metal will displace the less reactive metal from solutions of its compounds. On the right, you've got the reactivity series there. So at the very top, we've got our most reactive, which is potassium. And then we work our way down through the list until we reach our least reactive, which is our platinum. So I've put hydrogen in there, which isn't a metal, but it gives you that little reference point to know what's going to react with water or acids. Because remember, if they're more reactive than hydrogen, so the ones above it, then we will see a reaction. If they're below hydrogen, we won't see a reaction. We do need to be able to write the balance symbol equations for these displacement reactions of our metals. So I've given you an example at the top there of copper reacting with silver nitrate. So copper is more reactive than silver. So that what we actually see is we start off with Cu, our solid copper, and our silver nitrate, AgNO3. And then the copper is going to displace the silver. So we're going to see it changing to CuNO32 and our silver on its own Ag. When we actually come to work out what we've got, we need to remember those key charges that are on our ions. So hopefully we do remember that NO3 is a single minus. So that that means that when we've got our copper, then it's a Cu2 plus, they tell you that in the question. So we've got to have two of our nitrate ions in order to balance those charges. We've also got the half equations on there, which we again need to be able to write, showing our oxidation and our reduction. So for our oxidation, we've got copper, which is then going to be changed into the copper two plus ions and two electrons. And then the reduction is where we start off with our silver ion, so Ag plus, and we then add an electron to it to make silver atoms. So because we've got both reduction and oxidation occurring, then this is another example of a redox reaction. So the last thing that we've got here is just a few of those useful patterns that are going to help you out when you're considering the reactivity of elements. First of all, group zero, the noble gases, generally do not react. Group one and group two become more reactive as you go down the group. So on the left hand side, as you go further down those groups, they get more reactive. Group seven, our halogens, become less reactive as you go down the group. Group one and two are more reactive than our transition metals found in the middle. 
and generally other metals. Metals may form ionic compounds with reactive nonmetals. Goes back to the work we did in our earlier chemistry topic. And reactive nonmetals may form covalent compounds with each other. Again, going back to the work we did in our earlier chemistry topic there. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can explain the reactivity of different metals. You can use experimental data to put metals into the order of reactivity. And you can predict the reactions and reactivity of elements from their position in the periodic table.